Hi guys, my name is Anna Maria and you're all very welcome to my channel. In this video I want to talk about reasons I don't really like living in Ireland and a few negative things that I see in Ireland. I'm talking about this because it has been four years since I live in Dublin and I can tell you what me and many other people see as some downsides of living in here. But I also have a video about positive things, about amazing things of living in Dublin, so make sure you check that. And the reason I'm making this video is just to give you a, a real overview of the situation because you can't say that a country is perfect or somebody or something is perfect. There are a few drawbacks to those things as well and I'd like to mention those drawbacks from my own point of view. Point number one is a very high cost of living. Yes, I know I was talking about this very often and I have a video about the cost of living in Ireland and I will leave a link to that video in the description so make sure you check that because it's very interesting and you can see how much I exactly spent per month. The problem is that yes, it's very expensive to live in here and the salaries are not too big for average people. It can be really hard to save money and if you want to save some good money you have to give up all the holidays, you have to give up all the entertainment, absolutely everything. Obviously there are people who earn a lot of money and usually we are a bit older people just because they had a long career and the problem here is the high taxes as well. So yes you work a lot and you have to pay up to 40% income taxes and that can be really really painful because because imagine you work so hard, you stress so much and you receive only 60% of that payment and 40% goes to the government and that can be really hard. Another problem is social welfare. It's actually amazing that the government offers such a great support for its citizens. So if you cannot find a job, if you had an accident and you cannot work and earn money, the government will pay you social welfare so they'll pay you some money weekly or monthly so you can buy food, you can pay bills and you can pay rent or mortgage, which is actually amazing. But the problem here is that many people who don't have any problems at all, but they're just lazy and they just don't want to work, they use that social welfare. Imagine you work very hard, you put a lot of effort to develop yourself, to study, you have no time to relax, you just keep working, working, working every day. And there are people who just do nothing, they are lazy, they don't want to do nothing, and the government helps them and you are being taxed. So it can be very demotivational when you know that you pay so much money to support some lazy people and I think that lazy people should not be supported. Lazy people have to go to work and they should bring something useful to the society. I am for supporting people who had an accident, for people who are sick, for people who cannot really work and they need some money to survive. I think it's an amazing thing to do but I'm against helping those people who are just lazy and they don't want to do anything. And this is a problem here because it can be very demotivational when I know that I work so much, I pay so many taxes and somebody does nothing and they just get money to, to leave. The next point, the third point, is the car insurance cost. Car insurance can be extremely expensive. I know a person who purchased a car for 2000 euro, they paid 3500 euro per year per that car. They never claimed anything and also that 3500 euro did not even cover the full repair of the car. Can you believe it? And this can be crazy. To make sure that your insurance cost is a bit lower, you have to try to pass the Irish license and get an Irish full license and then your insurance cost will be a bit lower. And this is crazy with insurance costs because you have to pay a lot of money considering the fact that you need to pay for fuel, you need to pay for um, repairing of your car as well and it will drain your budget so much. I totally agree that we should try to reduce the number of the cars that we use and we have to start using the public transport much more, which is yes, amazing, which is correct, which is great for the nature and for the environment. But imagine the situation when, for example, I used to finish my studying at 10 o'clock at night and I used to spend one hour outside in the rain, in the wind to wait for my bus that comes only once per hour. And obviously I used to get very sick, I used to feel really, really bad. And imagine 
imagine that the fact that I have a car it just saves my health. Point number four is weather. Yes, I showed you a few times when it was sunny in Ireland, but usually it is very gray outside. I will leave a link in the description uh, with a video of my friend. He explained why the sky is always gray. It's gonna be very interesting to watch that video as well. You know, it can be very depressive sometimes and I really miss the sun. I really want to get a bit more sun. I miss vitamin D and my skin really misses vitamin D as well. And even though it's very sunny outside, I can't wear a top because it can be very windy and it, it's gonna be too cold to wear that top. So I still have to wear a hoodie, for example. So my skin can't get enough vitamin D and this can be really, really difficult. And I, I've noticed that my bones, they can hurt sometimes. And it's not only me saying that, it's also different people talking about the fact that they feel that their bones quality is not that good and they really miss some vitamins, they really miss vitamin D and that can be a problem. Probably a solution to that is to fly to very warm countries at least once every three months to get your dose of vitamin D and check your blood and get enough vitamins just to be able to support the quality of, of life and obviously the quality of our body. is language. Yes, people speak English, but they speak a special Irish English dialect. It can be very confusing, especially if you didn't do any research beforehand. It can be very confusing to understand with Irish English. I'm missing about 10, 10 years. It's not all that difficult. All you got to do is have a good dog. Have a good dog and go at night, some moonshine night, just put the dog around him. Put them on a trailer or walk them. Also, people from north and south, they do speak different English as well. So they have different accents and you have to get used to those accents. You have to learn those accents. That's a bit of a problem, the Irish English dialect. You have to learn it. It's almost like learning a new language. It can be really tough. But usually I tell people to slow down. I explain to them that I'm so sorry, but I need you to be a bit slower because I like talking to you, but I really want you to be a bit slower to be able to understand everything you say. And then people slow down because they're all very friendly and lovely. And then my problem is not that strong. Also, I have noticed that people in Dublin, they have a very special, difficult accent. But people who live outside Dublin in the countryside, they speak a bit slower and they speak much clearer. And I actually like people from the countryside a bit more because they speak much clearer and much, much, much better. They speak like a universal English and people from big cities, they seem to be a bit faster and their accent is a bit more difficult to understand. The next point is using double sinks. Plenty of houses, plenty of buildings still have double sinks and we all know it's not hygienic anymore to use those double sinks. Imagine you want to wash your hands, yes? And you go to the sink and there is a sink with terribly cold water that will damage your skin and then there is a sink with terribly hot water that will burn your skin. Which one would you like to choose? <laughs> I honestly hate those double sinks and I really hope that with the time people will start using normal sinks in different buildings and different houses and the situation is gonna get better. Point number seven is accommodation. It's very expensive to find accommodation and usually it's very hard to rent something on your own so you have to rent it with other people and I personally hate living with other people honestly. Maybe if you're a student or you came here for just a while then it's absolutely fine to rent with other people because you can make new friends, you will have someone to talk to. But if you are a family, then it's going to be really, really hard to rent it with someone because you have to get used to someone's habits, you have to get used to other people, to the way they live and you have to talk to them and you might have loads of conflicts. So it can be really difficult to find proper accommodation. Also, in many houses, there is plenty of mold. Many people don't open the windows at all and they don't look after their houses. I know it's people's problems as well but because it's very humid you have to permanently keep in mind the fact that you need to open the windows every day that you need to clean everything as often as possible to avoid having mold in the houses because unfortunately the accommodation standards are pretty low and also when I moved to Dublin I was expecting Dublin to be a huge city with many skyscrapers I was expecting
expecting it to be amazing, but it's actually a very small city and nothing really happens outside Dublin. Just things usually happen in Dublin because there is a concentration of activities, a concentration of people from different regions, from different countries, and it makes the city very interesting and very multicultural. But outside Dublin, it's very, very boring. Not boring in a bad way because some people might enjoy it. I personally like to feel that there is something happening near me and around me. That's why I like living in Dublin. I would not like to go outside Dublin. But outside Dublin, there are just a few houses, a few pubs, a few shops, and honestly, nothing is really happening. So if you want a very introvert, quiet life, living outside Dublin is perfect. But if you feel like you want to leave, you have to live in Dublin because I'm such a person that I need to feel that something, something is happening around me. Cool, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it wasn't too negative. It's just my point of view and a few drawbacks of living in Ireland. Please let me know in the comments what you think about it, what you think about Dublin and Ireland, if you have ever been here or if you're living here or maybe if you're a native um, Irish citizen. I'm curious to know what you think about it. Do you see the same negative things and the same positive things? Because I know we're all very different people. Thank you for watching this video, guys. Please remember to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next one.